Hey, hello and welcome back. And today I want to answer the simple question, why all the shortages? Why is the price of everything going up? Why have I got to wait so long for everything? What is this business going on right now with hardware shortages in the world of NAS, in the world of hard drives, in the world of SSDs? Today I want to go through the main factors right now that are causing the hardware shortages worldwide in these areas. Of course, this does affect other areas of computer technology, and the reason I'm focusing on those here is, let's be honest, because that's what this channel is about. Now, I say these factors, it's really four or five key points, but really there are tens if not hundreds of smaller factors that have caused the overarching lack of hardware worldwide. However, the reason I focused on these ones is these are the most pertinent and the ones that need to change or be addressed in order to sort this out. And unfortunately, we are going to be looking at shortages until at least 2022, and we are talking midway as well, and largely because of the factors that we're talking about today, potentially even longer. But let's go through each of them right now, one by one. So the first one I really want you to bear in mind, and yes, you probably saw this coming, it's to do with the pandemic, but not just pointing at the word pandemic and going, there's shortages because of that. This is so much deeper than that. The way the pandemic affected the world wasn't just in terms of everyone getting locked indoors or people have got to be safe and wash their hands a little bit more. In terms of hardware shortages, it led to several things. One, an obvious change in working practices at the point of manufacture. So you've got areas like, again, Taiwan and the manufacturing sector over in China, large areas of the East and indeed the rest of the world, of course, but in terms of these products, generally the East, they've had to change the way they work, have larger spaces, it slowed things down significantly. However, the biggest factor is to do with buying trends with the rest of the world. And the way this has affected the point of manufacturer that's effectively be, been playing catch up, a game of cat and mouse, with the way people have purchased. Now, one of the biggest core examples that is getting thrown around on big websites like Bloomberg, New Scientist and more, is this idea about where the chips are being used. So in the case of um, you know a lot of these reference and news sites, Cars are the big thing that people have pointed out. In the early stages of 2020, and dare I say, even towards the end of 2019, car sales hit the ground. They were just doing very poorly. Why? Because no one could go anywhere. No one was going anywhere. They were locked indoors. They, you know, car purchasing and stuff like that. And basically, car retail really did suffer. Because of that, less chips were being demanded for that particular industry. But at the same time, because people were locked indoors, because people were working from home, things like home consoles, TVs, media centers, home office equipment, computers, laptops, tablets, phones, all of these devices suddenly shot up in demand, shot up in purchasing, and the manufacturing sector was caught unawares. And the semiconductors, that's the key product, by the way, that of course there are other things in terms of memory and NAND and you know, um, uh, micro circuits and stuff like that, but semiconductors are basically it in this um, in this whole shortage. Because of this switch that was required towards these consumer-led devices, the same the semiconductor, although technically on a you know one could argue on a molecular level, is the same as that used in a car, the same as used in a tablet or laptop. The manufacturing process and obviously the gearing internals. And the creation of it is so, so, so much different. So all the manufacturing plants predominantly in Taiwan, which we'll touch on later, had to change what they were producing to meet that demand, which led to a shortfall temporarily, and then slowly that production built up again. However, different countries around the world dealt with the pandemic in very different ways. And I'm not just talking countries, I'm talking continents. The result was that the buying trends were shifting all over the shop. Suddenly, car sales started to ramp up a little bit. People wanted to go on holiday in their own country. They had a bit of a disposable income, so they spent it on themselves. The result was, suddenly, the manufacturing sector had to flip-flop again and again and again without a global picture to work with, with different regions being very, very different. The result was, this switch at manufacturing level combined with the change of working practice at these areas just the, the market was not ready for it and the manufacturing workflow was not ready for it. Now, you combine this with brands such as Apple producing new phones, the same goes for Google as well, and new technology 
still continuing to be rolled out due to roadmaps sometimes being planned two to three years in advance, the result was that the um, semiconductor manufacturing sector could not keep up and still now has not caught up. So that has led to the first big area of shortage in those semiconductors, the key component in today's video. But of course, that's not it. There's so much more to it. There's social, economic and political reasons for the shortages that we really need to get onto. So the second thing to bear in mind, and I know you're going to get annoyed at this because a number of us do, cryptocurrency has reared its impact on hardware shortages once again. We all remember how much cryptocurrency has affected and continues to affect um, GPU cards and that kind of technology. Anyone that ever wanted to use CPUs that, um, that were graphically embedded or wanted to buy some of the newer, more recent graphics cards were met with astonishing price tags and markups. And that's because the demand has grown in that direction because um, um, currency miners, cryptocurrency, that sort of thing, they have realized that they can spend six, seven, eight hundred a grand on a card, but get a return on investment on that of two, three, four, five, a thousand percent relatively quickly. So they were buying up these cards and getting rack servers that were just filled to the brim with 10, 20, 30, 40 graphics cards. This led to increased prices and low availability. Now that still exists today, but less so, unfortunately. Hard drives and SSD are slowly becoming the new target. There's pros and cons to this. Um, with new cryptocurrency methods, and one of the biggest ones being raised out in China, being Chia or Chia, I'm sorry about NACA in the pronunciation, C-H-I-A, being a far more storage-based cryptocurrency. The result is that these um, even though it's not fully out there yet and there are splinters of different uh, mining uh, and cryptocurrency methods coming off of this, because of this, even though it's not fully available, people are bulk buying up enterprise hard drives and enterprise SSD, with the second one being a predominant target, obviously, because of the performance benefits. Now, the reason for this is there is heavy rewrite operations, as one would expect from cryptocurrency, happening all the time in these. And they are bulk buying in large numbers at the point of manufacture, um, the availability, um, uh, uh, the uh, enterprise level hard drives and SSD, meaning that much like the graphics card from before, the price has started going up and the availability has started going down. And that combined with um, semiconductor and just general memory chip shortages has resulted in hard drive and SSD availability starting to get a bit crap. And that still goes in terms of the price going up and the availability going down. And again, cryptocurrency miners, it's so annoying, but it's sort of understandable. And to their credit, it has to be said, the cryptocurrency that utilizes storage over traditional GPU and rendering power is actually much better for the environment in terms of um, uh, just basically carcinogen, uh, not carcinogens, um, just basically burning and just general impact on the environment. They are just better overall when utilizing storage um, and burnout and stuff like that. Now, that's not the only thing for a consideration. And our next points are going to be quite heavily based on Taiwan. In fact, we have three main areas of concern involve Taiwan that really do need to be addressed. Because for those that aren't aware, Taiwan still, despite things that have been happening in the last year or so that we'll touch on, Taiwan is still the biggest producer and man oh, manufacturer and producer and exporter of semiconductors in the world. For such a small island, they do produce a hell of a lot of semiconductor. They own this market. And our next three points are kind of the pros and cons of that that have arisen. The first one, for those that aren't aware, and again, this was less addressed here in the UK. Part, obviously, we knew about this, but it has been heavily reported over there in the US, of course, is the trade war that was happening from, uh, I think, last year and the end of 2019, um, where um, restrictions were happening in place and blockades and stuff like that between China and the US. Now, China and the US are simpatico. As, as, annoyed, uh, as, annoying, as annoyed as they are at one another in terms of um, privacy invasion uh, and Huawei and that sort of thing. It has to be said that both need each other. 
And unfortunately, Taiwan is getting pulled into this in a big, big way. And because of trade blockades uh, and the trade war overall, the result has been that um, the, two and the two countries have kind of faced off against each other a lot last year. And even though they've moved from the Trump administration into the Biden administration, which again, I'm not going to pretend to have a viewpoint on, um, it still has not mitigated a lot of the damage that caused in terms of import-export between these regions. And, and although the independency of Taiwan and China, something that we will touch on in a moment, is still something that's up in the air uh, all the time, in fact, the um, ongoing trade war between the US and China still is ongoing and still felt across the entire hardware sector. And this still continues to affect a lot of hardware availability worldwide. Um, to mitigate this, it has to have been said that both countries have started to do a lot more on soil or in country manufacture of semiconductors. So China rather than relying on Taiwan, and much like the rest of the world, they're trying to do a lot more in-house semiconductor production along with other um, chips as well. And America as well has invested quite a lot into semiconductor production in country. And again, I think Biden in the last few weeks kind of announced a huge inset of money going into that to you know ramp this up to one, mitigate hardware shortages, but also to lessen uh, the dependency on uh, the Eastern Bloc for that kind of stuff. But that does lead us into our next point. That Eastern Bloc ownership of semiconduction, uh, semiconductor production, and let's face it, we are still talking about Taiwan here. One of the biggest issues they've been facing uh, last year, and you wouldn't think about it, because uh, a lot of people, it's not really been covered that much, is water consumption. Creating a lot of semiconductors uses a lot of water, huge amounts, in fact, in, and there have been reported droughts over there. And yes, we're talking about an island here, a relatively small island with water all around. There is still enormous droughts and shortages because you can't just get a bucket and start running back and forth. It's so much more than that. They've been draining reservoirs and had to bring in water from other sources in order to aid semiconduction cre uh, manufacture. And this is something that has been a genuine problem in 2020 and indeed 2019 as well. But due to the sudden changes in semiconductor, uh, semiconductor uh, requirements and just the sheer level and volume of their requirements to meet the sudden spikes in different um, utility, it has caused an enormous water issue over in Taiwan in this production, which again, alongside those changing trends in buyers and manufacture, alongside changes in working practices, has hugely impacted that of um, hardware availability and, of course, pricing therein afterwards. Which brings us into our last point. And this is the one where I'm not going to say it has a direct impact on hardware shortages, because, again, there are lots of things I've not talked about today, which are lesser things that are kind of pebble effect. The idea of the China-Taiwan ownership and sovereignty china still believes taiwan is all theirs and taiwan still believes they are completely independent that, that is too big a subject for this video but what i will say is of course the us is backing taiwan's complete um independence and you know good good stuff to see it's fantastic but it has to be said that china wants taiwan they want taiwan there's been lots of stuff with missile um exercises and taiwan every year even has um, due to them being very, very aware of other countries having eyes on them. Over a couple of years ago when we were in Taiwan, I was there um, during Computex when they were doing a missile drill, something I'm not used to in the UK. Hello, so whether you're Katie and Rob in the future watching this or someone else we've sent this to, a little quick story. So we're in Taipei, we're getting ready to visit one of the brands I was doing for work. And while we were there, on the way back from the Synology um, headquarters, we had a little message pop up on my phone that I sort of ignored because it was all in Taiwanese and a message appeared on Katie's phone. But while we were walking on the street during this heavy downpour of rain, um, we were whistled at with a whistle by a policeman who told us effectively to get into this little awning area. And it turns out they're having a practice run for missile alerts. That's right. So the whole street... It's completely deserted. Everyone's been told to go indoors or undercover because this message started appearing on phones. Yep. 
It's just a trial, just a little dummy run of missile alerts here in the country. Just something, a little memory to throw there in the future when we're looking back on Taipei and all the wonderful fun that we've had here. So I just wanted to send this video reminder to both us and anyone else that wants to watch this. See you soon. But um, apparently, you know, this is just something that Taiwan has just had to live with over the last few years. But because of those trade wars and because of semiconductor shortages, there is a thought and feeling that although China is still focusing on in-country production of semiconductors, having you know, Taiwan and owning that area of control in this part of the market and owning that manufacturing production and keeping hold of it would be very, very advantageous to them in not only the US-China um, trade war, but also in terms of furthering uh, dominance in this area of manufacture. And again, it's a small issue and I don't think it's by no means... Um, uh, a main motivator for China to try to say Taiwan is theirs, but it's certainly something that a lot of people are considering. And as the shortages continue and as the prices hike up, I think there has to be a consideration there that the impact this is making on that is very, very clear. But as mentioned, there are lots of reasons for these shortages from, manu from the point of manufacturer to distribution, import and exports. And let's not overlook little areas such as the throttling that has occurred uh, in e areas of Europe, of course, due to things like Brexit happening at the same time as hardware shortages, the US-China US, uh, US trade war, uh, semiconductor shortages and manufacturer changes, and of course, the buying trends changing dramatically. But this has been the main reasons for the hardware shortages and price hikes that we've seen very, very recently on NAS, on computers, on hard drives, and SSDs. I'm sure there are others, ones that maybe I don't think are as big, but you disagree. If so, let me know in the comments, and we'll do a whole NAS Compare article about this for everyone else. We're doing it right now, and it'd be great to get your viewpoints in there. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, click like. If you want to learn more, click subscribe. But otherwise, I will see you next time.